over the country, our lives are clogged with clutter. We Brits love to hoard, stuffing countless storage units, choking up our garages, blocking up barns. Your face has gone all flushed. <laughs> They're a record of our dreams. You're a DJ, you say? Yeah, yeah. Started in 1970. Past lives. Oh, there's some of my mum and oh. dad. And excess baggage. For many, it's a boxed-up burden. I mean, do you really need all these? Among the mess and mayhem... You've always got to keep an oily rag. <laughs> my mission is to dust off the diamonds. Between 1,500 and 1,800 pounds. That's Amazing. a surprise, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Eke out the emotions. I'm quite emotional about it, actually. And clear out and cash up in the process. 280, 300. Welcome to the world of storage hoarders. Hello, I'm Maggie McKenzie. I'm here to help two hoarders shake up their stash and turn big bills into bags of cash. Our first storage hoarder today is chartered accountant Martin Sturge and his fiancée Mary Louise. Martin first put his belongings into storage a distant 35 years ago. It's costing him a fortune, nearly £25,000 so far. So, why has he been hoarding stuff for so long? Of course, the question might arise whether I really am, or not, a hoarder. Martin lives in Bath in the southwest of England. It's a World Heritage Site famous for its Georgian architecture, Roman baths and being featured in several of Jane Austen's novels. And it was through their involvement in Bath's literary scene that the couple met. But as Mary Louise got to know Martin better, she discovered his storage secret. He does have a problem with throwing things out. It's been a bit of a shock to realise that he's had things in store for 35 years. I put things into storage in about uh, May, June 1981. These items came mostly from my flat, and some of them may have come from emptying out my apartment in Paris. Mary Louise, bless her, goes absolutely spare at even imagining half the clobber that I have accumulated. The cost of it, I, I find that quite difficult to cope with, really. With his hoard locked away for over 30 years, can Martin remember what he's been storing all this time? I'm not particularly fearful, because I know I don't have any dead bodies. There may be the odd dead mouse, perhaps my old linen fold wardrobe, perhaps a rather tacky chest of drawers. It's all going to have to be filtered down. Hopefully, Mary Louise will help me make my mind up about it all. But Mary Louise still has doubts about Martin's willingness to let go of some of the items that might be in the unit. I've tried very hard to get him to get rid of things. If there are any family possessions, he might find it difficult to get rid of them if he has to. Mary Louise will hopefully try and keep me on the straight and narrow. Once I find all these secret things, she will help me make my mind up as to what really I need and what really would be better in somebody else's hands. Can I convince Martin to change his hoarding ways and put an end to the storage situation for good? So, Martin, what outcome do you want to do? Do you want to get rid of all this stuff? I shouldn't think all of it, mm -hmm. but my house is chock-a-block, so I probably need to sell or maybe give bits away. Okay. I just don't know. It... You want to empty the unit, though? Get rid of the storage facility? Oh, I think facilities. so. I've paid enough storage now. Yeah. OK. Well, let's have a look in and see what we've got. Oh, oh my goodness, all wrapped up. Oh, that looks nice, Martin. It looks like a sofa. That's lovely, that. It looks like a sofa, yes. Oh, it looks like Do you a nice recognise chest? it? I don't know what that is. I have That's no a chest idea of what something. That is. That's an old oh. chest, isn't it? That sofa is one item that can go, then. Do you know where this came from? Well, I think that they were wedding presents to my parents. They look like wedding presents. And I know that my mother had some, and I guess that that box has never been opened. It, I know. It's, it's so never been new. used, has it? Isn't it? Oh, this, my this gosh. Gold, look. Aren't they lovely? What are you going to do with this? Well, I mean, who can tell, but it may have potential for selling. Yeah. OK, yes. good. I hope that attitude continues. Our second hoarder is Sue Bennett and her husband, Derek. 
They sold their house six months ago and have had their storage units since then, running up a bill of £500. Most people throw stuff away when they move house, but Sue and Derek appear to be holding on instead. I wouldn't say I'm a huge big hoarder, but I do have little fetishes. One is cushions, <laughs> another one is ornaments. I perhaps get a, a wee bit attached to the memory behind the piece. Sue and Derek's new home is in Seaton in Devon. The small seaside town near the mouth of the River Axe is on the region's famous Jurassic coast. While the couple's new home has been renovated, they have had time to think of how they got into this situation. We rented uh, this barn. We just put the extra stuff in, in the storage units. We didn't even consider whether we should reduce it or not. It just that was the extra stuff, and it went in there. When the stuff went into those storage units, I really wanted to be efficient. Probably an awful lot of what's in there is not what I ideally would want to take to my new house. With the renovations of their dream home almost complete, Derek is desperate for Sue to sort through her belongings. If we actually made two units into one. That would please Derek no end because it would halve the cost. Sue and Derek have now lived in the rental home away from their items and storage for six months. Can they remember what's in the two units? Sue's a, an avid collector of ornaments, so I would think that um, a lot of the stuff will be ornaments. I can remember some of the big stuff. There's definitely some bedroom furniture. Goodness knows what's in there that was in the garage. Derek has no idea about the rest of the house. He might get some surprises. We're probably like a lot of people who, who really need somebody to say, do you need that? Well, Derek, this is your lucky day because I'm here to do just that. So you're hoping sure. to turn two into one today? Yeah. OK, let's have a look inside. This looks really tightly, very tightly packed, is yes, it? Yes, yes. Um, I, I don't think we've got any more in there, to be honest. So looking at it, is your heart soaring or sinking? Tell me. A bit of both. Yes. <laughs> a bit yes. of both. Sinking that, uh, oh, God, there's so much stuff. Do you know what you're keeping in terms of furniture? Um, we're not sure what's there, really. <laughs> okay, so is this a favourite piece that you want to hang on to? No. no. Um, oh, now hold on. No. Derek's got a different. <laughs> no. Derek's got a different Apparently opinion. Not. <laughs> Apparently not. Fine. I think we'll stick with Sue's opinion. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So let's get some more out. Hmm. One piece of furniture down. I think downsizing Sue's possessions to one unit is going to be easier than I expected. <laughs> Ah. Another Susan's fetish. How many does she have? <laughs> Hundreds. Is this ornaments generally or cats? A bit of both, but mainly cats. Really? Trust me, <laughs> when you open everything here, there will be cats. Coming up, Sue negotiates her way into a deal. This bed. We sell the bed. Yes. And not the chairs. No, both. And Martin discovers just how valuable his golf balls are. I think you might get a nice surprise. Can you believe it? We're throwing her away. We're uncovering the locked up cache of two hoarding couples so they can declutter their lives. Martin has had a storage unit for over 35 years and has spent a whopping £25,000 keeping hold of stuff from his many previous homes. You want to empty the unit, though? Get rid of the storage facility? Oh, I think facility. so. I've paid enough storage now. OK. Our second couple, Sue and Derek, are in between homes and have had their stuff in storage for six months. So far, we've discovered just how much Sue likes her ornaments, especially the feline sort. Trust me, when you open everything here, there will be cats. I'm asking our two couples to keep it, skip it or sell it. I want them to split up their possessions, keeping those really sentimental pieces, skipping anything old, broken or just plain awful, and selling the items they think could be of value. 
I've also added a charity area where they can put anything that's too good to chuck. Later, our antiques expert Tom Keane will look over their hoard to see if there is anything of value. It's time for our storage hoarders to get cracking. They have just three hours to take a hard look at their possessions. And to make it easier for our couples and ensure that no valuable items are overlooked, we have help on hand to lay all their stuff out in a larger space. Martin's pal looks like a potential treasure trove. While Sue's has enough spare furniture to kit out two more houses. It's time to get sorting. Oh, look. Oh, look, Martin, is a... Is it guitar there? <laughs> That's a Russian seven-string guitar, yeah. and I bought it in Sochi with the Pushkin Club. Ah. Is music one of your hidden talents too, Martin? He is good, yes. He plays the accordion. He used to play it a lot. I used to play a lot of instruments. I used to play the organ at school. Yes. Like that. I don't think that's very valuable. I don't really think I want either of those. I think we'll put them in cell. I don't know. There's no time for sitting on the job, Martin. You have 35 years' worth of stuff to sort through. I used to use it for playing the guitar. Oh, did you? Yes. OK. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not going to do a concert now. We don't want that. Don't we? I think Marie Louise is being polite, Martin. Get on with it. These here were... Oh, yes, these are my mother's. Oh, Cops. look, there's some more golf clubs over there. Do you think it's any use? No. I think this is rubbish, don't you? Seems like Mary Louise is keeping Martin on track. So where are we going to put this? Are you going to I think put that in, sk in skip. But he soon gets distracted. There you are. Oh, look. How about that? Yes, Martin, very handsome. I wonder where this had got to. That's my old prep school. Look at that. There's my little brother, mm. Simon. Wow. Ha-ha! <laughs> now you've got a daddy, haven't you? <laughs> Take him with my little box brownie. And one or two nice things, but really, goodness me. <laughs> the cost of it over these years. I'd better check that Martin and Marie Louise are still on course. So how do you feel you're getting on sorting all this stuff out? Well, we've hardly had time, really. It's like a sort of dream journey. What's the destination for this box? Um, bottom drawer some somewhere, if I can find a bottom drawer. Look at Mary Louise's face. It says it all. <laughs> the cost of storing this rubbish. Let's get the lid back on. <laughs> Not going to throw it away for the moment. And Martin soon finds some other stuff that he wants to keep. That's my uncle. Frederick William Sturge, otherwise known as William Sturge. Will they be worth anything, do you think? Yes. Yes. A any idea how much? No. No. Uh, not more than 500. Okay. I have no intention of selling them at all. No intention whatsoever. No. Goodness. <laughs> oh, so we've got a little handbag here. Yes, yes handbag. they were my mother's handbag. So, Martin, have you hung on to a lot of your mum's stuff? Well, her handbags in particular. But handbags are not the only possessions of his mother that Martin's been paying to store. I cannot believe how many pairs of gloves that are here. There's lace ones, there's calf. Mary Louise thinks that perhaps they were worn just the once and not sent for cleaning, it's... I don't know. So, Martin, do you feel very attached to these gloves? Well, very, because they absolutely are redolent of my mother and her tastefulness mm -hmm. and elegance, I think, would be the word. Mm -hmm. So you think you'd keep a couple of pairs? Oh, oh, or... more than that. I'd want to keep, say, four or five pairs, uh -huh, I think, out uh -huh. of about 20 or 30 that are probably Yes. Here. So you'd be happy for somebody to have a look at these and evaluate them? Absolutely. I think Martin's mum's accessories may be collectible, so I've sent him to visit a vintage clothing specialist to find out more. Debbie Perrette has had a long love affair with vintage clothing. She opened her award-winning shop in Bath four years ago. Hello. <laughs> Hello. These are absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I would definitely date them Edwardian to, to 1920s. Would these be evening gloves or afternoon gloves? These probably would have been daytime. They would have had uh, a pair of gloves and match every outfit they had. 1920s fashion responded to the euphoria at the end of the First World War. 
ladies' fashion became more colourful, featuring brighter, vibrant colours, and accessories like gloves and handbags reflected these trends. People generally don't wear gloves no, for don't. fashion anymore. No. So, um, therefore, from our point of view, the, the value has, has dropped a mm. considerable amount. They're all in very good condition, and I think, I think a fashion museum would be amazed to, to see mm. them um, if you decided not to go to auction. But if you were to go to auction, I think as long as you can find a collector, yes. I think then you might... And are there specialised auctions for gloves? I wouldn't say... There's specialised auctions for vintage clothing. Um, there's a couple in London that you might want to have a look at. The bags are absolutely gorgeous. I mm. love them. And she's kept most of them so well. This one, which... Yes. Isn't it beautiful? You can imagine with all the flappers, you know, all the fringes the they had on their dresses. Absolutely. Yeah. We are losing I'm some sure of the I'm sure that bag danced right? to Charleston, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it did. Yes. And with the, the matching purse inside, it, 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 often these were lost bags. I think that is the most exquisite. I and there, think there are a lot right. of exquisite things that we uh, discovered there. But it's so heavy, isn't it? It really so is. It really is. The handbag as we know it was born in the 1800s, but it was during the Victorian era that the modern statement handbag emerged. These handbags were things of beauty, fashion accessories and colours to match different outfits. They were embroidered, embellished and constructed with beads, fringes, feathers, glass and semi-precious stones. If you're interested in the history of the handbag, the world's largest collection is in the Tassen Museum in Amsterdam. Let's have a look in here. Oh, there's something in here. Oh, my goodness me, what's that? Or well, does that mean something to you? Wow. <laughs> that was my grandpa's visiting card, Sir Percy Greenaway, BT. He was one of the senior aldermen in the city of London. Gosh, it gives me a real, a real kick of pleasure, that. <laughs> I've simply never seen it before. And I <laughs> presume in those days, young women didn't have their own visiting cards. They, no. She would have had her father's. Absolutely. You know, so if you wanted to visit Absolutely. her, you'd have to go through, have permission from her to father. Go through dad. I'd never yes. thought of that, but that You're would be true, yes. yes. You want to take me out to dinner, you best talk to my dad, sort of thing. <laughs> exactly. But. It's nice to find out more about the social history of Martin's mum's accessories, but how much is Debbie willing to pay for those handbags? These seven bags, I think, are lovely. I would be happy to pay £100 for those. Mm. I have to say that uh, I feel that I would sooner keep them and the memories they bring uh, within them uh, than have £100 and see them go. They mean something to you, so... Well, they mean more than £100 to me. <laughs> yes. I was a little bit surprised at uh, the very modest amount that she offered us. I think they're better kept in my ownership or the ownership so. of my family. Yes, and I think so. Placing an acceptable monetary value on personal family items is often difficult. For the moment, Martin will keep hold of his mum's gloves and bags and their memories. Talking about holding on to memories, I wonder how Sue and Derek are getting on with sorting their possessions. Good grief! <gasps> it just seems such a daunting task. <laughs> Oh, let's shift this. <laughs> but they get stuck in anyway. Key. 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 Auntie Clara's... What is that? An heirloom? I guess it is, right? It's, it? it's got a mark on it, and it's marked, so there you go. Skip. <laughs> oh, that skip pal's growing nicely. This is hoarder's stuff. It really is, Susan. <laughs> what on earth is that? Oh, oh my goodness. Granny <laughs> Silver. <laughs> <laughs> More of the same. What's that, then? We found that behind the fridge. Keep pile. And Derek soon realises just how many cats he's been paying to store. More ornaments. Oh, a cat! <laughs> oh, another for the collection. A cat? No, an elephant! Oh, an elephant! <laughs> Sue and Derek are adamant they want to downsize from two storage units to one. But I wonder if they're managing to put enough large items on the skip or sell pile. What's happening with the chairs? Are you actually selling the chairs? You've got them sitting next to the... Oh. Well, I thought we would sell them, okay. simply because we want to... The goal is to reduce it to, yes. to one. Do you tell me? I'll do you a deal. Oh, oh my okay. God, here we go. Right. What I'll, is it? I'll let those go yes. if this bed... What, we sell the bed? Mm. We sell the bed? Yes. 
and not the chairs. Now, hold on a minute. We don't want to end up keeping both the chairs and the bed, do we? And potentially, we could actually sell both of them. The bedroom it's going to go in mm -hmm. is quite wee, quite small. Yes. And I think we could do better than that bed in it. Oh, the so woman has spoken. Absolutely. Oh. If we're going to sell the bed, we might as well sell the matching... Furniture. ..drawers, cabinets... Dressing table. Uh, dressing table. Do you know what? Carry on the contents of the house. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> you know, now you started. What's stopping you? Time's running out for our couples. It's the final push to get all the items sorted into keep, skip or sell piles. Look, keep. Put it over there. Definitely keep that. Why on earth have we kept that? Shoes. That's all it's for. No. That's it, Mary Louise. You keep Martin in line. Keep. On top. In one of the final boxes, Sue discovers a reminder from her childhood. This is my um, father was in the war, in oh, Italy. Right. Yes. Can't and be he bad. Bought this whole coffee set back, all the way in his rucksack. That's Proudly amazing. gave them to my mother. Yes. Who wasn't a bit interested in yeah. anything material at all. Mm. Gave them to my elder sister to play with. Oh. As little children's teacups. Oh. So there's not an awful lot left of it. How lovely for little girls to be oh, able to yes. clean all the shininess of it. Mm. How are you with material objects? Have you taken after your mum or your dad mm. or a bit in between? I'm a bit of both, a really. Bit of both. Because I do, I, I do love nice things. So I love. Yes. I do. Do you like having nice things around yeah, you? Yeah, I do. What are you going to do with these? I don't now? know. You don't know. I do don't you feel know. attached to them. Well, just maybe if I just kept a cup and saucer. Yes. Oh, look, that looks pretty pristine. That's beautiful. Isn't that is it? a really nice thing. Just yeah. keep one, and then you have the whole memory mm. plus the thing to mm. look at. So far, Martin's keen to keep the personal items he's discovered, but after 35 years, it looks like he's finally willing to sell some of his old furniture. Sue, on the other hand, seems willing to sell or give away most of her precious ornaments, those chairs and that complete bedroom suite. Coming up, Martin exceeds expectations at the auction. And Sue's mum's tea set reveals some pleasant surprises. This isn't just a tea set anymore, is it? Mm, no. We're on a mission to slash the storage of two hoarding couples and lead them into a life less cluttered. Earlier on Storage Hoarders, Martin made a trip down memory lane, finding items he hadn't seen in 35 years. Wow! <laughs> now you've got a daddy, haven't you? <laughs> when they opened up their storage unit, Sue and Derek were overwhelmed by the number of ornaments Sue had been holding on to. This is hoarder's stuff. It really is, Susan. <laughs> What on earth is that? Both couples have been deciding what items to keep, skip or sell. So, have Martin and his fiancée uncovered hidden treasure in their storage unit? It's time for antiques expert Tom Keane to apply his encyclopedic knowledge to what we've found among their hoard. Earlier on, I saw these going towards the bin. Mm. Yes. <laughs> these need to go to a specialist. Oh, my goodness. Early golf balls, some are very, very valuable. Feather ones can make tens of thousands of pounds. What a one ball. <laughs> can you believe it? We're throwing them away. A specialist item, I won't even try and value those, but uh, I think you might get a nice surprise. Oh. You've got some hickory shafted golf clubs as well over there. There's about 100, 150 pounds there as well, so they should go to auction. You've also got a nice English hallmark silver two-handle cup and cover there. George III. 1772. I think it's got a later Victorian decoration on it, but even so, it's worth two or three hundred pounds all day long. Mm. Pleased about that, Martin? I've never drunk from it, or maybe I did once at my 21st or something, but I, I think it would find a more, I mean, more enthusiastic owner than me now. The Worcester coffee cans, hallmark silver spoons, nicely gilded interiors. Worcester's one of the best factories in the country. So we thought earlier the spoons might be made of gold. They look yellowy, don't they? Your best tarnishing. Tarnishing, tarnishing yeah. yeah. Okay. £250, £350, pounds, that sort of money. 
Well, onto the grape scissors. They're quite nice. Everybody in ish. Nicely cast with grapes and vines there. They're, they're worth 40 or 50 pounds to a collector. And the last item you've got over there is a gate leg table, barley twist legs, drop leaf. 1930s again, 1935 in construction. It's made of oak and it's worth 30 or 40 pounds. Mm. Well, I'm excited about these. It's amazing, isn't it? Tom's pinpointed a number of items that could do well at auction. The silver tankard that Martin last sipped from 50 years ago, estimated to sell for two to 300 pounds. And the ornate silver grape scissors estimated at between 40 and 50 pounds. Among the other things going to auction, there's a 1930s wardrobe estimated between one and 200 pounds. A collection of stamp albums estimated to sell for between 60 and 80 pounds and a chest of drawers, also valued around the same price. But before the auction room, Tom takes our couple to meet Robert Morton, a historian and sporting memorabilia expert, to find out if his instincts about those golf balls are a bonus or a bogey. The balls can be shown with varying patterns to determine the era they come from. You can see this one here has got squares, or square dimples as it's called, early 1900s, in use from about 1905 up to 1930. This one is the rubber cord ball. This is uh, yards and yards of rubber winding wrapped around a, a sack in the middle, which normally contains a liquid to give the ball propulsion and, and bounce. And the gutty skin is around the outside. You see this one has deteriorated terribly. Gutter percher balls represent a key moment in golfing history and the evolution of golf balls. Up until then, golf balls were handmade from either wood, leather, or feathers. Gutty balls were made using the rubber-like sap of a tree found in the tropics, and for the first time, golf balls became affordable. This helped to popularize the sport, and the hand-hammered gutty eventually led to the aerodynamic golf balls used today. But the real star of the show is this golf ball here, which is called a Bramble Patton golf ball, with the name, the colonel at one pole, and uh, the patent number at the other pole. And this would have been one of the very first balls produced in 1898. So that ball would date from 1898? It certainly does, yes. Gosh, really? Very early golf ball in the rubber ball era. Goodness. Yeah. It's extraordinary. Yeah. It's really a beautiful it's an antique, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beautiful patent golf ball. It's a real proper antique and a very highly collectible golf ball. Well, come on then, let's have a price. All of the golf balls in this box uh, are worth about 20 pounds. No great value there, I'm afraid. But that one has got quite a bit of historic nature to it. It's worth around about 60 to 70 pounds. And so collectively, the golf balls would be worth 100 pounds. While Martin's golf ball is an antique, its value would have soared if he had proof that the ball was used by a famous golfer of the late 1800s. What you've said about them has been very interesting. To be frank with you, I don't have an ongoing need for these golf balls. And if anything, I have the need for the space they might otherwise occupy. I would like you to have them. That would be wonderful. For 100 quid? I would be we delighted are? to do the deal, yes. Thank you very much indeed. And Mary Louise, aren't you glad you didn't throw those in the bin? I certainly am. Thank you very much for stopping me. <laughs> Well, I had no idea there was such a demand for golf balls, and I'm really happy now they've gone to a, a, someone who appreciates them. Marty makes his first sale and leaves the golf club with £100 in his pocket. I think that all went very well, didn't you? Yes, excellent. Result. Yes. Here's hoping he gets as good a result in the auction rooms. After more than 30 years under lock and key, Martin's items are about to be let loose as they go under the hammer. Any items today that you're particularly excited about? Well, that tankard, I was very surprised at the estimate that that might reach. But Can very you remind me what that was? Uh, two to three hundred, I think it was, something mm. like that. Have you got a figure in your head that you'd like to walk away with today? Maybe five, four to five hundred net. Mm -hmm. Does auctioneer Robert Dodd think walking away with five hundred pounds is possible today? Martin's got a really, really odd mixture of items. It, I do like a really good mixture. I think his furniture uh, is, is, is going to struggle a little bit. I think it's the, the cap that's going uh, to be his star. Well, Robert, let's see if you're right. One of those pieces of furniture, 
the 1930s wardrobe estimated to sell between one and 200 pounds is first under the hammer. 19th century oak robe, linen or storage cupboard if you would, that's that one over there. Lovely piece of furniture, it's got to start 80 pound on the cabinet, looking for 85. Oh, I've got 85 on there, I've got to give 90 anywhere. I've got 85, 90 pound there, 95. <laughs> 100 on each. 100 and 10. 120 I want. 120 pound, that's cheap. Are we all done? Last time. 120's there, 130 I need. Are we all done? 130 in front. Ooh, it's 140. exciting. Are we all done at one? 140 standing. 150 Ooh. I need, my love. Ooh, they really want it, don't they? No. Done. Last time in front at 150 pound on the robe. That's pretty good, isn't it? A little bit. That's well over the estimate. That's a good start. The bidder seemed really interested in that wardrobe, snapping it up, bang in the middle of the estimate at £150. Next up are the silver grape scissors, estimated to sell at between £40 and £50. It's got to start with a bid with me of £40. Looking for 42, 42, 45, 48, 50 pound. Five I need anywhere. 55 there seated. Looking for 60. 60 pound, looking for 65, looking for 70. 75 there, 75, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, are we all done at 115 pounds? Selling these at 115 pounds. That's pretty good, isn't it? And Martin gets another sale. The grape scissors go for almost three times their lower estimate at 115 pounds. A collection of golf clubs is next, estimated at one to 150 pounds. Four early 20th century leather and canvas golf carrying bags. Good lot. Good to be straight in at 22 pound on that lot. Looking for 25. Are we all done? 25 on the telephone. 28 in front. 30 pound I need. 30 pound I've got. Looking for 32. It's on the telephone. On these golf clubs. At 30 pound. 30 pounds. Mm -hmm. Below the estimate. Disappointing. They go for £30, £120 below the higher estimate. Ah, maybe this furniture will do better. Estimated to sell for between £60 and £80. Four drawer chest with a panel relief, cast iron escutcheons. Nice lot, that bid to me straight in at £50. Looking for 55 on the chest of drawers. 55 I'm out. On the right, looking for 60 anywhere. 60 pound on the telephone, looking for 65. We all done on that chest last time. At 60 pounds. 60 pounds. Sold at the lower estimate, not bad. But unfortunately for Martin, the next piece of furniture, the gate leg table, doesn't sell. Neither do the stamp albums. The final item under the hammer is the silver cup estimated to sell for between two and three hundred pounds. Martin's surprised at the high estimate for this item. I wonder if today's bidders are going to want to sup from this cup. Straight in at 140 pounds. 150, 160, 170 I want. 180, I've seen you, I'll be back. 200 pounds, 210 I want. 220, 230 I need. 240. 280, 300, 330, 340, 350, 400, 450, 500, and 10. I think Martin's in shock. 530, 540, 550, 560, 570, 580, 590, 600, 600 here, we'll look at the 620 anywhere. Are we all done? At £600 on the cut. What about the last item then? Well, I thought that's very gratifying. In that single item, it's as much as the maximum they thought for the whole set. Amazing. What do you think, Marie Louise? I'm very surprised. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Pleasantly surprised. The silver cup goes for a whopping £600. So, Martin, that was quite a finale, wasn't it? The tankard was. Yes. A surprise. I didn't know when it was going to stop, and it just went on and on and on and on. Yes, it was lovely. You looked completely it? astonished all I the way I was astonished, through. yes. I thought it was... I didn't realise it was so valuable. <laughs> You've made £955 before commission. More than I was expecting. Yes, that's still Is the that cap. a good lot towards the pool? That'll make a great help, yes. It'll mm. probably pay for um, 
<laughs> oh, I don't know, bits and pieces towards the pool. Martin got a great result at today's auction. He sold most of the items and walked away with £716 after commission. With the earlier sale of the golf balls for £100, Martin has made just over £800 in total. What's happening about your storage unit? At the moment, I'm using about one cubic metre of space. Mm -hmm. So next week, I'll go down mm -hmm. and remove <laughs> the rest of the stuff mm -hmm. to my house. Mm -hmm. Great, so that will be your storage days over. That'll it be, will, yes. That'll be It'll my certainly. storage days over. Okay, yeah. well done. Yeah. Well, the good news is Martin did clear out his storage unit and is now saving himself around a thousand pounds a year. Time to start planning that swimming pool. Coming up, our expert Tom finds some hidden gems among Sue's hoard. I suppose a nice little find behind a uh, behind fridge. 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 Yeah. And will Sue be able to shift enough items at auction to downsize her storage units? Just take it away. <laughs> Earlier, Martin and Maddie Louise did a great job raising over £800 at auction, cleared all their storage, and are now looking forward to a life less cluttered. <laughs> wow. Sue Bennett and her husband Derek have been busy clearing out their clutter. They want to reduce the two storage units they have to just one before they move into their new home. Antiques expert Tom Keane is also here to help me evaluate Sue's wares. Tom has had a look at some of the items we've found and it's time to find out what he thinks they're worth. I heard there's a nice story about this tea set here. Yes. Yeah. Luster ware, probably from the 1930s, 40s. A continental factory, unfortunately not saleable, very poor quality, not worth putting to auction, I'm afraid. Do you know what? That's great because you don't even have to think about selling it, do you? I don't know. No, do I? Exactly. Uh, you've got two bits of silver on the table, a silver mustard and a silver vase, both English hallmark silver. You're going to get around about 100 to 150 pounds of the two bits. I suppose a nice little find behind a uh, behind fridge. 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 Yeah, yeah, well, so yeah. That's nice. There should be another two bits with the salt and pepper, but... Uh, yeah. We should have searched harder, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, they didn't throw that one. <laughs> this three-piece tea set is silver plate. It's only worth 10 or 20 pounds, this set, but vintage tea is coming back. Which brings me on to your better item, your part Shelley tea set. This is very high art deco. Do you like it, Aggie? I love it. It's exactly my thing. It's very stylized with the handles, and I think Shelley captured the market there. So let's take it to a specialist and find out more about it and uh, perhaps they can value it for us. Should the items achieve the minimum estimated price at auction, Sue would walk away with £300. Going to auction are that lucky find behind the fridge, the silver mustard dish and vase estimated to sell at £100 to £150 and the Victorian chairs for £1 to £200. Among the other items going to auction are some modern pine furniture and the silver plate tea set. Sue and Derek are taking the Shelley tea set to be valued by Janet Prescott at her shop in Cornwall. She's been dealing in China for many years and will be able to tell them more about the history of the set. Here's the tea set we've got ah, you to value. Let's have a look. This is lovely. How long have you had this? Since my mum died, it was a wedding present for my mum and dad when they got married, which would be 32, something yeah, like that. Makes, yeah, absolutely, yeah. that makes that makes sense, because Shelley were um, very sort of Art Deco, 1930s, mm. same sort of era as Clarice Cliff. Yes. It's never been used, has it? Very I pretty. don't ever remember, but my older yeah. sister remembers. They, they go back years to, I think they were called Wildman and Co, oh, before, yeah. before they were Shelley. Also known as the Foley Potteries, this Staffordshire company's high-quality wares have been prized for over 150 years. The company was eventually registered as Shelley Potteries in 1910. During the Art Deco period, it was noted for its exciting and innovative designs and the quality of the porcelain used. Oh, look, there you go. There oh, it is. That's, that's, it. that's the one. Yeah. Dating from 1933 to 35 showing Eve and Regent shapes. From the registration number on the bottom of this, mm. we can actually date it to when this pattern 
was registered. Here we are. Registration number. Seven, eight, one, yeah. six, one, three. Right. It's exactly it? what we, th what we what said, we said yeah. 1935. Mm. Yeah. And that yeah. number what there, that, number on that the will other? have just been that would have just been identified the person mm -hmm. working in the factory. Like Cladis Cliff Designs, Shelley China has become highly collectible, and as such, there have been a number of fake items on the market. New collectors and Shelley fans are advised to check items carefully before they buy. As a display piece, and the fact that it's Shelley, which is a very respectable china for for its time, you're looking at at least 30 to 40 pounds per trio. 150, that, 160 yeah, pounds. Yeah, yes. I'd probably put it up, up for sale for about 200, 250 pounds. Would you be willing to part with it? <laughs> I don't know. But I'll have to... Um... It's changed your mind, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. About this isn't just a tea set anymore, is it? Mm, no. I am very pleased I didn't sell it and I will keep it. She felt that she should hang on to it, and so I, I see no reason why we shouldn't. So Sue's holding on to the Shelley tea set, but her other items are about to go under the hammer at the Northampton auction rooms. Are you excited? Very. Yeah. Are you ready to see those armchairs going? They look nice. <laughs> But then I can find something nicer. Good for you. Do you I think in your head you've already let them go? Uh -huh. Oh, I've let so much go, Aggie, I can't tell you. Does that feel all right? It feels wonderful. It's quite um, freeing. Yes. Before the auctioneer, Peter Harris, swings into action, I've asked him to give us his opinion on the lot Sue and Derek are selling. The silver vase and mustard dish, two very nice items for one lot. That might struggle to get its reserve at £80. I think the, the pine bedroom furniture, lovely. I think that'll make £100, £150, providing what the right people here. Let's hope the right kind of people are in the auction room today. First up, the silver vase and mustard dish, estimated at £100 to £150. But Sue has put reserve on them of £80. Silver vase, I think that's 1932. And the mustard dish, £100 for the two. 100 anywhere, 90, 80 anywhere. And we all done then? Nobody wants a bit of 80 pound, we all finished. That's OK, I'd take it home. <laughs> because there were no bidders, Sue will not be parting with the silver after all. Next up is the silver plated tea set, estimated to fetch between 10 and 20 pounds. 20 pound for it. 20 pound for the silver plate tea set. 15 in the room, do you want 15 anywhere? 10 then, let's get it gone. 10 pound for it. 10 pound, I've got to take 12 anywhere else. 12, 14 sir. 12 pound, gentleman in front of me. 12 pound, I'll take 14 anywhere else. Are we all done? Oh, Estimate 10 to 20, so sold for 12. Yes. Sue's got her first sale. At 12 pounds, the tea set does sell for two pounds above the lower estimate. Maybe the bidders in today are more interested in furniture. The two Victorian chairs are next. £100 for the two cream armchairs. £90 then, £90 for them. £90 anywhere. 80 I'll go to 50 guys. £50 for the two armchairs. 50 I've got. I'll take five anywhere else. £50 I've got. We all done then. £50. We all done. £50. Well, we don't take it home. That's good. So that's good. Well, that's yeah, it. no. Crikey, they go for half the lower estimate. But this sale brings Sue closer to her goal of downsizing their storage units from two to one. I hope the bidders take a fancy to the next lot too. Sue's pine bedroom suite, estimated at between one and two hundred pounds. One hundred and fifty pound for the lot. One hundred and fifty pound for them all. One hundred pound for the old bed, pine bedroom suite. One hundred pound anywhere. £80 anywhere, we all done then, £80, we all done, we finished. I've got a 60, £60, pound. we want to get them sold, £60 pound, guys. Surprisingly, no takers in the auction room, even at that low price. Just take it away. <laughs> Sue's wish is granted and the bedroom furniture is sold on commission for £60. Pounds. So, are Sue and Derek on target to reduce their storage units? Good yeah. to let go of the big items. Yes, huh? yes. 
Great. One, one container less. That's right. That's the whole point. It was the girl, wasn't it? Exactly. That's right. Yeah. And everything that's left in storage, you can take into your new house, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Yes. That's so right. That's right. At the end of the proceedings today, Sue sold three items. After commission at the auction, she'll walk away with just over £100. But because Sue has managed to downsize her storage unit, she'll also be saving over £400 a year, making her richer to the tune of £523. So you're happy about everything going? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the small items that didn't didn't sell, uh -huh. we can just well, they pop in the boot and take it home. So after all this hard work, and I hope not too much trauma, are you going to treat yourself something nice? Good. We'll have a nice meal tonight. Good for you. Yeah. I'm pleased Thank to you. hear that. Have a nice meal on 100 quid, can't you? Sue and Derek have had a long haul sorting through their possessions, and because they've reduced their storage units to one, when their new house is ready, they won't have any storage costs at all. I'd call that a result. Today's hoarders have finally come to terms with their surplus stuff. Remember, storage is far more sensible as a short-term solution.